Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Postscript. I'm Dan Slagle, the Care and Bridging Pastor here at FaithBridge, and today I'm with Adam McIntyre, who brought us a great message on the incarnation of Christ, a very appropriate topic for this time of the year. Thank you. Yeah. Good job, Adam. Appreciated <laughs> that, you, that message. So, um, for 21st century ears, mm -hmm. the conditions that you described of Jesus' birth are abhorrent, of course. Right. Who wants to be born in a cave? Uh, who wants to be born with farm animals all around? Uh, who wants to be born in dire poverty uh, right. under suspicion of, you know, giving birth out of wedlock? All, all right. of these terrible things. Um, let's take it back to first century reader. Okay. Luke uh, is addressing his contemporaries, who are many of whom are probably Jewish, but probably many of whom are not. Sure. Um, how is this going to strike them? Right. Uh, I'm sure not in exactly the same way that it hits us, but how would they have read it? And why do you think Luke was careful to include these various details surrounding Jesus' birth when uh, the other gospel writers aren't quite so detailed? Sure. Uh, well, I think uh, first we have to look at what the original audience was expecting uh, when they um, heard about the arrival of the Messiah. Uh, you know, for they've been waiting for a really long time uh, for this Messiah to show up, and they were expecting uh, someone who would be royalty mm -hmm. and who would be mighty and powerful, and they were expecting someone who could uh, defeat their actual like human enemies, like the um, like Rome. Right? right, and um, and someone who could lead them to become the mighty nation of Israel that they had always dreamed about um, since the covenant. Right, right. and uh, instead, um, they uh, Jesus shows up and he's born uh, with, and nobody notices. Right, he's born alone in a cave. Sure, um, and he's born in uh, these dire conditions. He's born in poverty, um, and and then he. Uh, becomes a servant, and he, ba he basically he's the opposite of every type of power that we could imagine, um, and every kind of power that the original audience imagined. He was nothing. He looked nothing like what they were expecting. And same thing for an audience even that wasn't Jewish. Again, I said anyone when you imagine a god, you think of power, right? Sure. You think of someone who's mighty and who uh, you serve and and kind of. Uh, you know, lords their authority over you, that kind of thing. Right. And Jesus came and did the opposite. Uh, he didn't lord power over anyone. In fact, he served uh, everyone. He served the people that the rest of the world had cast out. And so even for someone who didn't have the Jewish expectations of the Messiah, mm -hmm. Jesus was still uh, not at all what they looked like. Not to mention that even the, the Jewish audience, when they heard about this Messiah, they weren't ex actually expecting God. Okay. Right, they were uh, expecting someone who God would send that would defeat all their enemies and lead them to the the final promised land. Right, but they nobody anticipated actually like God in the flesh showing up on Earth mm -hmm. in these dire circumstances. So that especially was um, uh, again hard to fathom. Uh, then just as much as it is now, it's uh, it's hard for us to imagine God Himself was roaming the Earth, dwelling among us. Right, it's just right. a hard thing to to think about. Yeah. So, um, startling as those things may have been, what was the purpose of Jesus' mode of entry into the world? Why did he come that way instead of the way uh, the world expected him to? Sure. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, uh, when God in the flesh showed up in the person of Jesus. He was the opposite of what everyone was expecting. Uh, and his power didn't look anything like uh, the power that we imagined because his power was his love. Okay. Um, his, that's his primary power. He has this overwhelming love. And so the way that he expressed that love to creation um, was by actually showing up here in the flesh, coming into this dark world. He didn't have to, right? Um, he has existed for eternity in the Holy Trinity. And mm -hmm. uh, he came here um, because he loves us. And he came here to share in our struggles, mm -hmm. um, to share in our weaknesses, um, so he could uh, empathize with us. Um, like when we, 
Um, when we struggle, when we come across, come upon hard times, um, that's not something that uh, God is not aware, like God himself has experienced that, right? right. And not so he, removed exactly, from the situation. Exactly. Yeah. He actually can empathize with it because he's experienced it himself. Okay. Um, and so all of this was a display um, of God's incredible love mm -hmm. for his creation. That was the reason he came. That's the reason why um, he intentionally um, emptied himself right, and made himself into a servant. And that was the reason why he willingly embraced uh, torture and death. Remember, he didn't have to do that either. Just before, uh, like as he was being arrested, he said, I can have legions of angels here, it could destroy everyone, no problem, I'd be done. But he didn't, he willingly embraced all those things. Again, because all of this is a demonstration of his perfect love for us. Um, and so as Christians, we are to look at that demonstration um, and uh, again, part of the Christmas story is that we are to then model ourselves after it, mm -hmm. um, right? That's what I mentioned in the sermon, that we are uh, to look at the love of Christ, how he entered into our darkness and sin, and we are to go out and do the same. Um, and that's, you know, um, in Romans 8, uh, all creation is described as, uh, as like being in labor, right? right. All creation is uh, groaning with uh, the labors of childbirth or of birth. Um, and so you can imagine that the world right now is just pregnant with hope. And it's the job of Christians to kind of be midwives for that hope okay. uh, because we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And okay. so we are to go and carry out that hope into the world um, and go into any dark areas that we find in order to be, be a light. Okay. Light of Jesus. So uh, would it be fair to say that uh, Jesus... Um, entry into the world and the way in which he came into the world uh, was not only to achieve a particular purpose, i.e. the salvation of humanity, right. but it was also revelatory. It, it right. revealed something to us about the nature of God, who God That's is. That's exactly right. Okay. Right. In the person Jesus, uh, we can see clearly who God is. Um, Jesus perfectly reveals uh, God's nature, as you mentioned, and his nature is love. Uh, that's a God is love. That's yeah, all love is flows out of him. He's the source of it. And Jesus reveals that. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. And as Christians observing that, mm -hmm. it's not simply uh, a notion to be pleased with or right. amazed about, but it's something that is to shape and form our character right. and uh, give us opportunity to move into the world as well. That's right, yeah, that love is, uh, it should be transformative, right? We don't hoard that love to ourselves. Right. Um, we go out and we bring it uh, to the rest of the world because that love is for everyone. Good, um, good. Yeah. Well, thanks, man, I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. It's been uh, good to have you with us today. Hope we'll see you again on the next edition of Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.